Hello and welcome to Brooks TV. I'm Josie Smart. And I'm David Bullock. For the first time ever, Oxford University has elected a female Vice-Chancellor. But what does this mean for the city? On the 12th of January, a new Vice-Chancellor of Oxford University was elected. The role of Vice-Chancellor is to lead the university and put forward policies and ideas to improve the uni. They act like a president and principal of the university, so their thoughts and opinions often affect how the uni works. Louise Richardson is the first female Vice-Chancellor of Oxford University. In nearly 800 years of appointed chancellors, all of them have been men. We spoke to the public to find out their opinions. I think that's great. Um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, diversity and, and uh, change, and, and I think that's really important. Um, there's so many uh, female students at the uni. I think it's really good, a positive direction. I think it's a pretty good thing. It's like a progressive move forwards for the university. You know, I think Oxford has this big reputation as being really old-fashioned and sexist and stuff, so I think it's pretty good that uh, things like this can put it into the present, at least, or nearly. We tried to get a hold of the Vice-Chancellor for an interview, but unfortunately she was too busy this week due to her new role within Oxford University to meet us. We interviewed the Oxford Brooks Women's Officer to get her thoughts on the matter. I think it's amazing how long it has taken Oxford University to actually step up and hire a woman. And for them to give us a vice chancellor, like the position to a woman, I think it shows that we are strong enough, all the women we have always been. But this shows it's like a step closer to, being, to achieving equality here in the UK. It'll be interesting to see how she affects the university during her term. This is Amy Oswald Davison reporting for Brooks TV News. Oriel College in Oxford has decided not to remove its statue of British imperialist Cecil Rhodes, despite the controversial campaign and protest against it from students. But the argument rages on. On High Street stands the controversial statue of Cecil Rhodes, a 19th century colonist and businessman in southern Africa who represented white supremacy. He once studied at Oriel College in Oxford University and has a scholarship named after him called the Rhodes Scholarship. Student campaigners now want the statue to be torn down because of its racist connotations. On 19th January, students at Oxford Union voted to remove the controversial statue. I went to find out more about the results. We had a panel discussion uh, that was entitled Must Rhodes Fall. What we were very keen to do was to make sure that uh, whilst this has been presented as a simple yes-no question, it's not that at all. Well, what it is, is it's a very complicated issue um, with a broad spectrum of opinions, and that's what we tried to reflect with our seven speakers. We had a very interesting discussion, um, involved many questions from the audience, uh, and, and a wide range of topics were discussed. The video is available on, on YouTube to watch in full. Um, the outcome of the vote was that the statue should come down. Out of the members in attendance, that is what they decided. It was by a slim margin. It was 245 votes um, for the statue coming down and 212 for the statue not coming down. Despite the student votes, the final say rests with the college, who have since released a statement saying, following careful consideration, the college's governing body has decided that the statue should remain in place and that the college will seek to provide a clear historical context to explain why it is there. Public opinion about the statue still remains uncertain. I would say that it's, you know, obviously a very controversial issue, but, um, and I originally thought that it probably, you know, it should be because it upsets many people. I think there's almost, um, you know, not quite a good enough reason not to take it down. But then at the same time, it is, you know, it is a statue, it is part of the history. If people feel discriminated by it, it should be taken down. I don't think the, the way to change um, the prejudice of Oxford is to take down history. Um, in fact, I think the fact of the statue being there is a constant reminder of the past, which makes us want to change the present. Ever since the statement released, student campaigners are continuing to condemn Oriel College for keeping the road statue. This is Kathy Yajunchi from Brooks TV. Loneliness among young people in Britain is a big problem. However, there are a group of young farmers in Abingdon that are helping to find a solution. 
In 2010, the Mental Health Foundation found loneliness to be a greater concern among young people than elderly. The 18 to 34 years old surveyed were more likely to feel lonely than 55s. Abidan Young Farmers Club in Oxfordshire helps to prevent feeling of loneliness among young people. We are a group of young people with an interest in agriculture and the countryside um, between the ages of 18 and 26. Is this club only for young farmers? This year our slogan is you don't have to be a farmer to be a young farmer because we don't want to be seen as a closed loop or clicky or and we because we're certainly not. Um, we're open to everybody, farming or non-farming background. What's your aim as a club and what kind of activities do you do? Our main aim as a club is to basically be a social club um, and to help young people with their social development and development as a young adult. We do a different activity every Thursday night and this can range from anything from farm walks, ice skating, stock judging. How do your club activities help with the personal development of young farmers? I think how it helps is you get the opportunity to do anything and everything. You don't have to be good at one thing, but through competing in different sports and doing public speaking, you get better at whatever you're doing and a lot of people get more confident. And one thing you will hear is a lot of the county chairmans and then higher up through national, they say the best thing about young farmers is public speaking and it's given me the ability to stand here and talk to you today. What motivated the members to join the club? Um, my parents brought me along when I was 10 and I've been going ever since just because it's so much fun and you get such a variety of activities. I was motivated to join Young Farmers when I saw the kind of fun activities they do at their rallies and I really wanted to be part of the group. Although in 2014 the Office for National Statistics found Britain to be the loneliest capital of Europe, there are still social clubs that fight against it. This is Mariana Costa from Brooks TV News. The £6.7 million redevelopment of Fry's White Square was completed last month. We went to find out how it's affected Oxford City Centre. The £6.7 million redevelopment of Fry's White Square is now complete. Having taken around 45,000 working hours, 400 tonnes of granite okay, uh, and 3,700 square metres of Yorkstone, a new junction at the end of Botley Road and shared space facilities for pedestrians, cyclists and public transport. The focus of the new design is to keep traffic moving by the use of roundabouts at either end of the square. All traffic now travels along one central carriageway with pedestrian courtesy crossings replacing the old traffic lights and crossings. Each day, there is around 20,000 pedestrian crossings in the morning and afternoon peaks, and a further 2,500 cyclists. The old system was slow due to stop-start system of traffic lights and crossings. There are now more than 37,000 cars, vans and light goods vehicles and 5,000 lorries passing through the new free-flow system. Well, the shared space philosophy of uh road design has been pioneered by Ben Hamilton Bailey and this is a very good example of what he intends to produce by that and it has worked very well elsewhere and evidence so far the county council engineers have been producing for us shows that the level of tolerance of road users to pedestrians and vice versa is very good and that the two are combining very effectively. Uh, the bus stops that are in Fines Wild Square seem to be working fine. There were worries initially about whether they were wide enough, but they seem to be okay. Uh, so, so far, so good in that respect. It's just quite annoying and impractical the way you had to sort of, you know, elongate your route and it wasn't really clear where you were going and it was very really smelly as well at times we came out. So that wasn't good for the six months that it was going on. But now it looks a lot better. It's a really nice place to be and gives Oxford a good ref, I guess, which is always a good thing, because everything else is so nice, but just this bit down the train station that looks a bit, a bit rubbish. That, that the um, flying pedestrian thing works, works well if people are, are considerate to each other. We did a survey, two of us walking, one in a wheelchair, to see how well the crossing points work on the new Fried's Wide Square, which we prefer to how it was before, definitely. It's easier than it was, but um, what we found was the courtesy crossings, which they said would make drivers more courteous, 
No lights or signs yeah. is meant to make drivers more courteous. The bus drivers were definitely more courteous. They all stopped and let us cross. Um, but even seeing a wheelchair user, car drivers didn't stop and van drivers didn't stop. Even to the extent of slowing down and stopping on the crossing in front of us. This was James Fallows. Students were disappointed when they came back to Oxford to find that one of the main nightclubs, Warehouse, has been shut down. But no one seems to know why. We sent Dan Jordan to try and put the rumours to bed. The final week of January saw the return of the annual Brooks Refreshers Week, where students of all years came back to university for a week of partying and nights out to blow out the Christmas cobwebs. However, this year, there was a glaring omission from the bill. For years, this club has been the focal point of the Oxford Brook students' Friday night, and as recently as last summer, it received a rebranding to become Warehouse, as well as an interior renovation that included a brand new VIP seating area and sound system. And yet, only 18 months later, the site has been abandoned. The reason why still remains to be something of a mystery. Lauren McNamara first shed light upon the strange goings on via the Oxford Brooks tab where she also reported radio silence from the venue across all of social media. The Warehouse Facebook page has disappeared off the face of the earth and the website is completely inactive. She went on to say, There is no news of upcoming events at the venue and that the club's promotional video has also been removed from the site. I spoke to Anthony Dan, a promoter for Ace of Clubs, the company who hosted Candy Fridays at Warehouse, to try and find out why the club has fallen off the radar, but he declined to comment. However, the Brooks tab then broke another story confirming that the club was closing down due to a combination of a challenging lease and a poor trading period, and that the site was due to be turned into a youth hostel. So, although the future of the building appears to have been confirmed, students of Oxford Brooks will have to wait and find out what the future holds for Candy Fridays. This is Dan Jordan, reporting for Brooks TV News. That's it for this half. After the break, we'll hear from Mara Martin, the Oxford Brooks Women's Officer, to tell us about her role at the university. See you soon. Welcome back. Earlier in the show, we heard Mara Martin's thoughts on Oxford University's appointment of their first ever female vice chancellor. She w visited us earlier in the week to talk more about women's rights at Brooks University. So, Mara, tell us about your event and why you think it's so important. Well, I'm doing this event, which is a screening of film called The Hunting Ground, which is about sexual assault in the campuses in the United States. And, well, I really wanted to present it here because I don't feel, of course, that sexual assault happens only in the United States, it happens around the world. And I wanted to do awareness in this issue here at Brooks and I wanted to invite this, well, many important uh, people so they can host the band and step up uh, and say good words and motivate the students to do it. And one of the person I was thinking to do it was Emma Watson. Emma Watson, really? Oh, that's very impressive. She's sure to draw quite a large crowd. Why is it important for you to get famous people into your event? Well, especially Emma Watson. She's a, a UN, well, the UN Women's Goodwill Ambassador. And she also has launched a cafe which is called He for She, which is basically making men be involved in gender equality to step up and be aware that women have the right to do the same. And she also, actually, she had this interview with this girl, his, her name is Malala, in 2015. And at the end of the interview, Malala actually said that she also considered herself feminist. And, and I think she would be, well, Emma Waxwood, she would be so important. She has stepped up so much in saying about gender equality. And if she comes here and say to women that it's important to step up and say what happened to you in the issues, they. I can bring more people to be aware, to not be scared about the, the sexual assault problems or gender equality. Okay, um, and why do you think gender equality is such an important issue? Well, basically, I feel like everyone should be the people, women, that have take so much effort to work and uh, like achieve everything, whatever they want. They shouldn't be stopped just because they're a woman. If they make so much 
like work they have um, um, how you say they have yeah work a lot for what they want they should be able to uh, reach whatever they want no because they're women they should be have a lower point from men and same as uh, same as men i mean if you work hard you, you're allowed to have that position why women uh, shouldn't of course yeah. of course yeah um during your time at brooks you've been here for four years i've heard um do you think brooks has done enough to raise awareness on equality well, yeah, there's actually, mm, I know this issue that happened with the football game, that they were like degradating uh, cheerleaders. And while coming in Facebook about Ethan saying that really bad stuff is. So Brooks has step, uh, step up, the student union step, uh, step up, and they say like it wasn't okay. And I think they actually close uh, the, like, the group and they make a stop because they're a student for our university. So yeah, I think that they have a step up in those issues about gender equality and anytime it's an issue, they will, you just need to tell them basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, so other than the event, what other things have you achieved as a role as women's officer? Um, well, the event is just about making awareness, but as I have been getting emails being a women's officer, you get emails about things that happen in social media mostly. Uh, actually, well, this is, I cannot say the name of the person because it's confidential, but I got this email about a guy who posted uh, a photo of sexually about a woman decorating, and this, uh, this girl stepped up saying it wasn't okay, that that was like really racist. And instead of them saying like, you know, sorry, I, I did wrong, um, this guy just basically keep on going saying that she should wear like a tampon which I feel like is so degrading for women but yeah yeah that's very degrading so um so do you think you've made a difference as a women's officer yeah hopefully have made and I can hopefully in the future I can still make more like awareness I can stop these things in social media well thank you very much for joining us today Mara it's a pleasure meeting you thank you so much for inviting me now everyone knows the idea behind fair trade, but do we really understand enough about the system? Brooks TV went to find all, out all about the way fair trade affects how you buy your stuff. In the economic system, some greedy agents keep suppressed producers for earn more money. So fair trade is coming up as a way of trying to get the balance. Fair trade is a way of trading by which the people who produce the goods get what has been agreed to be a fair wage. The manager said that 1.4 million farmers and the disadvantaged are getting benefit from fair trade, not just the locals. Logo of the fair trade visualizes and brings out the message that fair trade benefits locals and farmers. And that is an image of somebody waving. And the idea is that we're all interconnected across the world the manager said they buy products from over 70 different organizations around the world. Fat trade is a global issue and relates closely to us. Brooks TV went to the city center to get the public opinion on this issue. I think that all products should be fair trade without saying. It's important to remember uh, that there is a human at the end of every product. Uh, it's not enough, but it's a step in the right direction. Because there are still lots of people out there who don't realise what fair trade does, don't understand it. There is an easy way to support fair trade. Fair trade fortnight is coming up on 29th of February and it will last till 13th of March. The theme this year is sit down for breakfast, stand up for farmers. Join to show your support. This is Mariana Costa from Brooks TV News. And now for sports. Soon we'll get you up to date with the scores from the local rugby. But first... Everyone has heard of cricket, football and tennis, but what about the sport of fives? Dan Jordan has been to visit Ifley Road Sports Centre to find out all about it. There are many unknown but popular British sports which are being played across the UK, like real tennis and underwater hockey. Fives is an example of one which is played mainly in public schools. Fives is an old English game which combines the traits of squash and handball. 
Instead of a racket, like in squash, the player wears gloves to hit the leather ball. It must hit the front wall and may only bounce once. But there are variations to the sport. There are three main types of fives. Rugby, Winchester and the most well-known Eton fives. Eton fives was invented in 1877 by pupils at the school who played it against the side of their chapel. The headmaster at the time, Dr Hawtrey, decided to build purpose-built courts for the pupils based on the side of the chapel. Rugby fives is the one most similar to squash, played on a square court with no obstacles. Like Eton fives, there are clubs which can be joined by anyone from the public of any ability. Winchester fives is similar to rugby, but there is a tall buttress on the left wall a third of the way back. We asked the fives captain at Oxford University how locals can get involved. Uh, well, I mean, there's a local club up in North Oxford. They play at uh, Summerfield School. They've got some courts up there. Uh, and I mean, it's really easy just to go down and have a knock. You literally need no equipment because we've got all the gloves and the balls and all you have to do is show up in a pair of shorts and trainers and crack on. Sam Welty is a Brooks University student. We asked him how he got involved with Oxford University Fives. You can see five scores it's quite hard to come by and Brooks doesn't actually have any. So um, Oxford born to play any fives, Oxford's the only place I can really go to. To get involved in fives in your local area, contact the associations online at www.rugbyfivesassociation.net and www.fivesonline.net. This is Dan Jordan with Brooks TV News. And now for the latest scores in the rugby. Bottom of the league strugglers Wheatley have been in action against Chesham, looking for a win to drag them out of the current poor run of form. Let's see how they got on. Wheatley are currently bottom of the table, having had a poor season. They're taking on Chesham, who are only just above them in the league. Wheatley have already lost to Chesham this season, away from home. Now they're looking to secure a vital win on home soil. In the first half, both teams came out very strong. After the 38th minute, Chesham managed to take the lead after a penalty was awarded for a Wheatley offside, giving them a three point lead to take into the break. Early in the second half, Wheatley came back strong, and within the first 15 minutes, took the lead with a simple chip to the corner, 7 3. Straight away in the 59th minute, Chesham scored a try of their own, scored by the wing. They restored their three point lead. Wheatley had a great chance towards the end of the second half, but they just couldn't keep hold of the ball and it knocked on. The final score was Wheatley 7, Chesham 10. Here's what both captains had to say. Well, it was uh, pretty tight, uh, really close game, um, absolutely knackered now, but yeah, really uh, glad to get away with the win. They could have gone either way, so close, so yeah, but Wheatley put up a really good fight, so yeah, it was a tough old game. This year we've struggled with consistency of players, and um, which was just really shown on the pitch. We have a different back line most weeks, and it really demonstrates on the, on the day that we don't know what each other is doing. The referee also agreed with the Wheatley captain saying he's surprised Wheatley didn't win. When the Wheatley 13 just knocked the ball on and just, I felt that if they'd scored from there, they would have actually just gone away and scored a few more tries. So I think the Wheatley backs lack confidence at the moment because they're going through such a run of poor form. Uh, well, we have a semi-final, the County Cup, coming up next week against Farrington, uh, playing here as well. So hopefully we need to rally the troops and get together for that. I think it's, um, it's not... Individual efforts is fine, it's just we're not playing collectively well as a team at the minute, so we need, to, we need to sort that out. And that's it for this week. Thanks again to Mara Martin for joining us in the studio, and thanks to you at home for tuning in. Yes, and don't forget, you can watch all of our previous episodes on the Oxford Brooks YouTube channel. And if you want to get in touch, you can email us at brookstv at brooks.ac.uk. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.